day up here on the lot. As you can see, the footings are in for the foundation. It's that first step that has to happen before the blocks are gonna get laid for the crawl space. Hopefully that'll happen within the next couple days. It's starting to get cold up here. The leaves are almost all gone. They were beautiful just yesterday. Now they're almost all falling to the ground today. So definitely getting cold, trying to get, trying to get this thing in before winter. So finally made it back up to Crosby. Got a couple nice days here. I'm gonna try to seal this thing up, but the crawl space looks like she's done. Looks pretty good. You can start to begin to kind of see the outline of where the containers are gonna go and how that relates to all the woods around us. There's a road out the front and the back. There's some power. If we look out this way, there's gonna be a patio pretty much right straight in front of us and that's gonna be looking towards some piles of sand. Those will get used for backfill, but essentially all these birch trees and behind that is the Mississippi River. So things are looking pretty good. I'm gonna take a peek at the measurements here, see if everything checks out and we should be good. I'm gonna start sealing this thing here in a couple minutes. All right, about to get started here. Ended up just picking up some real cheap, I mean, this is like $35 for about 4.75 gallons of this non-fibered foundation coating. It's asphalt base. It says you can be applied in a little bit colder weather just to make sure that you have it warmed up beforehand. So it's been sitting in my truck with the heat just blazing for the last couple hours should be ready to rock we'll see how well this works all right so not going as quick as i would expect that's probably what because it's a little too cold out and that asphalt stuff is pretty thick it's not really sliding too far i already went through a whole five gallon bucket and as you can see behind me here there's only about a 30 foot portion of the wall done so i'm going to go on to the second uh second bucket i brought we'll see how far i can get it might be okay. Majority of the house is actually gonna have a slab going around the perimeter of it. So this backside, you know, back here, is, uh, is truly the, probably the only place that might get water. But then again, you know, so much sand around here, not sure it's gonna be a worry. 
we'll see how far I get and we'll go from there. Just finished off that uh, second pail of sealer we had and whew, probably didn't even get halfway done, but I think, you know, that's all I bought, so I'll be done for today. Definitely towards the end of each bucket, it started getting thicker and thicker, so it's certainly a little too cold out, but I think, you know, it looks okay. Uh, it's, it should, should do its job. Really just looking to try to keep damp proof it. There's not really going to be any hydrostatic pressure occurring in this area just due to all that sand, so we should be fine. It's looking decent. Here's the other side. You can really, maybe you can really see how thick it was getting here towards the end. Just kind of dripping off there. For the most part, I said, whatever. I just tried to keep that top block nice and uh, smooth. So I went over that a lot with the brush so there weren't any drips. And it looks pretty good. Hopefully it'll dry and within the next couple days, I'll be able to come through and start to backfill with some sand. Got a lot of, got a lot of backfilling to do here. Day two, made it back up to the lot. Probably around 1.30 today. It was about 50 degrees, still pretty nice out and Finished it up. Woo! Should be good. Uh, looks all right. Yesterday's uh, actually dried pretty decently. There's certainly some runs on the lower, lower bricks and whatnot, but the top one looks good, and it starting to kind of turn like a matte type of color, which which I'm cool with, and uh, hopefully Britt will be too. Foundation's looking pretty great. Kind of focusing here on these corner pieces. Ended up going with a steel embed plate here on the corners for where the container corners will sit. I've got them notched in about half an inch below the, the top of this bond beam here. And the hopes that once we set the containers down, it'll be, it'll be nearly flush. Those corners on the shipping containers do hang down a little bit. A little bit over a half an inch. It's looking pretty good. So we got these uh, in all, all corners here. There's two for the 20 foot, another couple up there, and then obviously the 40 footers down there on the other end. Gonna pick up the last couple of tools, get cleaned up here, and then head south. Got a lot of work to do on the containers. It's supposed to be beautiful this weekend. Hopefully that's going to give this behind me a decent time to cure and uh, dry out. So I'm looking to backfill probably on Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. So about three or four days. That should be good enough. And the forecast has rain right after that. So that'll be great to compact the sand once I start to backfill. So we've been showing you guys a ton of progress that's been being made on the containers, but what we haven't been showing you is how much driving we've been doing the past few months. I think in this last week alone, I put 14 hours, no, I put 12 hours on the road and Austin put, I think 14, and that's literally seven days. Again, that's because the containers are three hours south of where we live in Minneapolis and then our lot is two hours north so there's five hours in between them and there's just been a ton of back and forth lately. How do you feel about that? Angry. <laughs> yeah it's been uh, energy draining to say the least but hopefully we'll be getting these things moved within the next few weeks and then we'll at least only have a two hour um, distance between us and the containers. So yeah, it's literally been up to Minneapolis, back to Iowa, up to Minneapolis, to the lot, to Minneapolis, to the lot, to Minneapolis, back to Iowa right here. All I can say is thank goodness that we're both able to work remotely. We've had a turn of events here in Iowa. It's the beginning of November and 
three days ago, I was out here for three hours and I couldn't feel my toes. And now it's almost 70, which means I get to give the rust removal another go because it's warm enough to be able to spray paint. So since I'm not perfect at it yet, I'm gonna do in between the 40 and the 20 foot container and I'll show you um, but where they're gonna be put together just to control that rust and make sure that nothing bad happens in the future. What are you working on, Aust? I'm gonna cut this window in a little bit more so that the steel frame can go in. Just needs a little bit shaved up here on the left. We'll get that frame put up in there, weld that baby in, and then I'm gonna cut in the bathroom window. Here is what I'm talking about and what I'm going to be working on. So this blue container is the 40 foot container and you can see where there's going to be a bathroom door cut out and then it's marked down there where there's going to be a door into a storage area. It's going to be inside of this 20 foot container and then there's also going to be doors marked out here that I won't have to do but the rest of this stuff all needs to be taken care of. There's quite a bit of rust so it's probably going to take me the next couple of days.